What's up, Epi Bob Penguin? Today we're 2021 number five on ecology, logistic growth, resiliency, and invasive species. Annual plants complete their life cycle, including germination, seed production, and death within one year. A trifida, giant ragweed, is an annual plant that readily colonizes any land that has had a disturbance such as plowing. The plant is considered an invasive species in regions outside its native range. In a particular region, the seeds of A. trifida germinate from early March through the end of the summer, while the seeds of other annual plants require warmer soil conditions and thus germinate from late April through the end of the summer. Researchers identified the influence or studied the influence of A. trifida on the biodiversity of other annual plant species that grow in the same field. In early spring, researchers marked off identical plots of land in the field that had been plowed in the previous fall and had not replanted the new crops. All plants that grew on one half of the plots were left untouched, while all germinating A. trifida seedlings were removed from the other half of the plots throughout spring and summer. In late summer, the researchers counted and identified all plants that grew in the plots. The di distribution of plants is represented by the symbols. And so here we can see that uh, we remove the... Uh, like we left it untouched on one half, um, and that led to the trifida basically taking over because it's an invasive species. Versus over here in part B, um, we removed the trifida um, throughout the spring and summer. And so in late summer, we're not seeing those seedlings anymore. So part A asks us to describe a cause of logistic growth of the ragweed population. And so logistic growth is where we reset carrying capacity, it's that S-shaped curve. Versus exponential growth we saw was that J-shaped curve, it would just keep on growing. I mean, so the thing that we see with logistic growth is, of course, carrying capacity. So there must be some resource that's limiting, whether it's space, sunlight, or something else. I mean, that allows the uh, population to kind of level off of that carrying capacity. So you had to talk about the factor being limiting, and that would cause our population size to stabilize. You had to talk about either space, sunlight, herbivory, phosphorus, nitrogen, or some other density-dependent factor um, becomes limiting, and then the population will stabilize. Students said one cause of logistic growth is that the space the ragweeds have grow to grow in on the field is limited. So that limits the size the population can reach. It is a density dependent factor that causes the population to level off at care capacity instead of continuing to grow exponentially, leading to logistic growth. Part B asks us to, based on the representation of figure one, explain why the scientists claim that plot B is more resilient than plot A in response to a sudden environmental change. So what we see with resiliency is that we need there to be more biodiversity. And so if I can compare uh, group A, and biodiversity has to do with the, um, no, the species richness, so the number of different species, as well as the um, abundance of those species. So in A, I see there's a large uh, fraction, a large percent of the population that is this one species, as well as so I only see a richness of two. Versus over here in B, I see a richness of three, because there's three different um, types of organisms here, or species. Um, and then I also see that they're relatively the same uh, percent, about 33% or each. Um, and so I would say that B is more has more biodiversity, which leads to it being more resilient to a sudden change. So plot B is more resilient because it has a greater species diversity than plot A. Students said plot B would have more resilience because it has a greater amount of biodiversity and through that genetic diversity. This means a sudden change occurred in the climate. There is more of a chance something will survive from B because there are more different types of plants with different um, jobs than A. In a third group of plots, the researcher removed all seedlings of all plants that germinated before June 1st. All plants that germinated after June 1st were left untouched using the template in the space provided for your response. And the symbols shown in figure one represent the expected plant species that would be found in a third group of plants three months later. Draw no more than 12 symbols. Assume all environmental conditions are the same for the initial study. And so here I know that the A. trifida germinates from early March through the end of the summer. So it's still going to germinate after June 1st. And the seeds of the other annual plants require warmer soil temperatures and thus germinate from late April through the end of the summer. Again, they will still be growing. So I would expect to see all four of these different species on my plot. And so I would put three of each of them, which would give me those 12 individuals that I were maxed out at. Um, but I should just have all of the four species actually on my template. Here, the students did that. They put all four of them on there and they didn't max out. Oh, they maxed out and only did 12. So part D, explain how an invasive species such as ragweed affects ecosystem biodiversity as illustrated in figure one. And so why would I see there to be a decrease in biodiversity that we saw in that plot A? Well, invasive species have no natural predators. And because they have no natural predators, they're going to be able to grow exponentially. 
They're also, as we saw, the ragweed is going to germinate earlier. And since it germinates earlier, it's going to be able to start growing and take up all those resources that doesn't allow these native species to get those resources. So you could have said any number of options, no predators. Uh, but the big thing you had to then say was that we were decreasing biodiversity. It would germinate earlier, use of the resources, and decrease biodiversity. If it's species, the other species, and then decreases biodiversity. So students said, Invasive species reduce biodiversity by outcompeting many different types of native species for resources. This causes the invasive species to take over and the different types of native species to decline, leaving a lot more of one type of organism in the ecosystem than before. Hope that was helpful. Remember, if biopenguins are successful, bye, y'all.